all the cops are quitting, it turns out. Uh, and this is pretty bad for, for people who hate crime and dislike the crime. But for crime enjoyers, fantastic news, boys. And if you wonder what the hell I'm talking about, it is this. This is a, a thing. So this is the standard, some crappy outlet, reporting on a survey that was done of Metropolitan Police Officers. It says here, nearly a third of Met Police Officers plan to quit within the next two years. And the guy in charge is like, well, that's a bit concerning. It's just a bit. Just, a bit, a bit. just say for anyone who might be foreign or from not London. The Met means the London police. Yes. Okay. But the survey was for English police. So it was all England and Wales. All England and Wales. So the Met Police have responded to this, but it seems to be the case that uh, basically everyone is like, hmm, this job sucks. I'm going. Yeah. I, I've got a friend in the police. I won't say exactly where, but I saw him quite recently and he said he's quitting soon. I asked him why and he said the police don't work anymore and that uh, there's a lot of new recruits that he's very unhappy with who don't do the job properly. I'm sure we'll find out why as we dig into the details. So they say 9 in 10 say that they feel worse off financially now than they were five years ago. And 22% never or almost never have enough money to cover essentials. Scotland Yard Chief Sir Mark Rowley, so this is the commissioner, the guy who took over from Miss Dick, said that his force is facing a deeply concerning shortfall in the official number of uh, recruits because they're not able to reach their targets, with public sector pay levels being the issue, he says. Now, my spidey senses immediately thought this is probably some kind of like move to get more funding because whenever I see public body complaining about pay or the amount of funds they got, I just assume they're trying to get more. But, um, well, the more I dig into it, they might be right. So the workforce will now be 2,650 officers smaller by March 2025 than it is now. The reason this is a big shock is because the Conservative Party, when they came to power in 2019, promised an extra 20,000 police officers and they were going to throw money at hiring police officers for that purpose. And the number has gone down, not, not up. And then the reason being that literally just no one wants to apply. They're not interested. You, you go to them with the job opportunity and they're like, nope, screw that. I feel like sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to direct your attention to the aesthetics range of merch that we have on the store. These are beautiful images that I think work really well as posters or mugs. So if you want to support us, going over to the merch store at shop.loadseater.com is easily the best way other than signing up on the website. I've seen a similar thing in America. There's a problem with recruiting cops in America. And of course, there's a parallel with the, the military as well. Yeah, and, uh, and teachers and all sorts of things. Why would you want to serve a state? that hates you. I think this is probably a big reason going into it. And so they say, according to the 2023 Police Federation of England and Wales Pay and Morale report published on Wednesday, 29% of Met Police officers responded saying they intend to quit the service within the next two years or as soon as they can. So it might be even sooner. The survey based on about 6,000 responses, 97% said they do not feel respected by the government. That's pretty high. 84% said they would not recommend joining the police to anyone. <laughs> that's not good so so basically all of them have no faith in the government that they're supposed to be representing and basically all of them would say don't join don't do it go do anything else if those numbers were in a private company you wouldn't really have a company you would have a failed business yeah, adventure right, yeah, yeah like like right now as i said yesterday we have a failed state because I, I have some thoughts on this, because if it's that high and they're saying within two years and nothing's done to fix it, yeah, within two years, you're going to find yourself absolutely buggered. But you're just not recruiting new people and losing your old people in droves. Well, then rip, R rip organization. So there's one comment in here that they plucked out from the survey, and it's from some random officer who says, we need to revert to the time when being a police officer was a long time vocation with decent paying conditions, not a short term job where officers struggle to put food on the table. And this reminds me of when we looked at that Bulgarian woman, or I believe she was Bulgarian, was serving as a part-time police officer. Do you remember this? Yes, yes. The one who, uh, there was some praying going on outside of a mosque and this was illegal. It was a church. Oh yeah, a church. Oh shit, sorry. Christian prayer, she was shutting down. Never Muslim. Outside of a Christian church? Yes. Classic Bulgarian. Hates Christianity. Okay. But the idea of even a part-time police officer, and the reason she was doing this is because she gets a rail card so she, she can go on London tube services for free. And it's like, Right, that doesn't seem like a, a public service. This seems so, more like a gig economy. What are you doing this for? The love of law and authority and the rule of law, peace? No, yeah, rail card. Yeah, the rail card. So they say here, Met officers and staff have recently had a 7% pay increase, but understand the cost of living has increased and other additional 
advice and support uh, to officers who are struggling will be offered. That's their response. So the Home Office is saying basically we will, well, we're giving them a 7% pay increase. What are you moaning about? Uh, they also then said that they don't believe it, which, good luck with that. So they're sitting there with a nothing will happen meme from the Home Office. Which, okay. So the Home Office is saying they don't believe the results of this survey and yeah. that there, there'll be a mass exodus of police officers in the next two years. They're saying, trust us, bro. But you also said you were high 20,000 more and you're actually losing them per year. So I don't know if I trust them. So they, they saw a large bird with its head in the sand and they thought to themselves, oh, I wonder what's down there. I'll join you. Seems to be the case. Also, for anyone who doesn't know, the police come under the purview of the Home Office. So they're essentially, the police are essentially a wing of the Home Office. So they're, they're responsible for it. There's yeah. something so terribly, profoundly wrong at the heart of the Home Office, isn't there? There's no care given to the... It's like they're I mean, deliberately it, trying to tank the country. It's what it feels like, isn't it? Because it, it, I think every political ideologue, ideological position can agree, except the AMCAPs, that the Home Office, in the UK context, obviously, is the most legitimate and important thing you can do, keeping the public safe from crime and terror. I mean, these are the two options it's got, keeping it safe from, from well, foreign and domestic enemies, fundamentally. It, it, and then you've got the military, of course. But, I, I mean, who disagrees with, with having an effective police force, except actually the people in charge, it seems. Yeah. Mm. And so, ra radical leftists as well. You say it's just ANCATs, but let's not forget right, right. radical leftists think that applying and enforcing laws is racism. I wonder why. Absolutely correct. But I thought I'd have a bit of investigation because they uh, the, the focus of this article was largely on pay, which um, isn't what was in the comments. The comments was a bit more about the, the status of the role and the treatment you get. But okay, we'll check, check the payout. So I've only got one data point I can compare, compare like to like, and that's a sergeant in band two. Because I found this, and this is monthly pay. As you can see here, according to, um, I, I put this up from the police, and as you can see, there's constables and then sergeant down here. So band two was forty three thousand pounds, six hundred, uh, sorry, nine hundred sixty five there. So forty three grand, forty four grand, round up. Why not? So there we are. That's it in twenty twenty. So if we check inflation, just for a quick check, you can see from April twenty twenty, uh, if it went up with inflation, it would have to be fifty seven grand now. Jeez. Because inflation was 30%. So that's, that's just to stay in the same place you were in real terms. Now, let's compare this to the rest of the country. So this is average weekly earnings in Great Britain. And this is the, the latest edition. And if you scroll down on this, you can do this in your own time to compare your own pay or whatever. And you can go to whatever month. So if we go to April 2020 here, wherever that was, just come past it, whatever. You can see a number, and then you plot in the number that is today. That gives you how much pay has changed for the average citizen of the UK. Now, of course, some people are better off, some people are worse off. So what's the situation with the police? Well, the average pay increase is about, what is it, 25%, something like that. So it means there's a, a real-term pay cut uh, of a significant margin. Sorry. Yeah, so 24.9% raise. So a real-term pay cut on average of 5%. So the average person is getting a 5% cut. But if you load up, uh, there should be another link in there, John, just before the ONS one, in which... We should see that there's uh, the modern figures for the police force. So, as I said, if they went up with inflation, it would be 57 grand. Uh, if it went up with the average increase in pay over this time period, which is 25%, it would be close. I don't know, what, 50 grand? I can't do the math in my head. So, we go and check it out. Here's the police. Here's what they're offering. And then we go down to Sergeant Band 2, 49,000. Right. So, that means that they're in a rise of 11%, so a real term cut of 19%. So the rest of the country is on a cut of 5%. A sergeant at Band 2 is on a cut of 19%. Okay, I can see they're a bit miffed because their, their standard of living has gone down in real terms significantly. There is also some detail here for London. They get some allowances. Because we've, we've also got to say as well, comparatively uh, to most people in the country, that's a, a relatively high wage because the average annual wages in this country are about £36,000 a year. For full-time work, it's around, I think it was 36 a couple of years ago. I don't know what it is now. Uh, last time I looked, it was still around 36 for most people. Fantastic. So as you can see there, this is pretty good. But then again, you are a sergeant. I couldn't find for const uh, constable numbers, so the you know, like basic police officers. Sergeants, as I understand it, police watching will know better than me. This is not my subject. That They're basically managers, in a sense. So they're managing a small team. So making sure professional standards are kept. So they're working effectively, blah, 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 blah. So that's why it's a little bit more than you might think for the average worker, because it's not an average job. That's actually one of the higher ones. And then it goes up and up and up. 
obviously, as you get to the higher levels. But I wanted to keep it somewhere where I could at the lower ends. So that's that. So yeah, I mean, they are worse off, not smallly either, like 19% worse off in real terms than they were four years ago. So okay. Um, I mean, it, it would make sense if it was readjusting to the role, like if they were overpaid in 2020 or something, which I don't know, I kind of doubt that that was the case. Kind of seems like an important position that we want to keep at a professional level. Not, not that it always is anyway, but there we are. So there we are. Um, I think that that 84% saying they wouldn't recommend the job, though, not just about the pay. I got, I got, maybe I'm wrong, but I got, a, I got a strong feeling it's not just this. Otherwise, why would you get the comments talking about the status of the role, how we're treated by the government? Yeah, I think there's a bit more going on. Well, that, so, no, that is a devastating stat. Yeah. 84% won't recommend it. We're always talking about the frivolous new laws that are being passed that criminalize just normal behavior in the UK. And I highly doubt that the vast majority of police officers out there join the force so that they could enforce hate speech laws on normal citizens who are part of the communities that they're intended to be protecting. They probably thought, I want to stop violent criminals, stop drug gangs, stop rape gangs, that sort of thing, not knock on next door neighbor's house because they sent a spicy tweet. So that guy I mentioned earlier, Mark Rowley, he's the commissioner for the Met Police. He replaced, um, of course, Miss Dick, that you may remember. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't remember her, uh, she was the lady in charge of the London Police. And all you ever heard about her was the, some new retarded thing the police were planning. And she would be the person to come out and defend it and say, it's fantastic. We're not going to change course. Whatever it was. I mean, there's just a billion news stories, so I, I'm not going to bring them all up. But this one here being a great example. Uh, so Miss Dick here, she says she favors minority recruits. This should be the law, she says. The law should be that you discriminate against whites. The reason being, according to her, is that it's the right thing to do. I'm convinced. So, <laughs> what an amazing argument. <laughs> Just... Aristotle could not match such logic. Yeah. I hated that about the Cameron era. I don't know if you ever listened to David Cameron. He would always say that. It's the right thing to do. Why? Well, it's just we don't know. It's just BS. You just say it's the right thing to do, refuse to elaborate. Yeah. There are some details, though, as to why this law was proposed. So more than 40% of London's residents are black, Asian, minority, ethnic, compared to 18% of the Met's workforce. The Met wants to increase the intake to 40% of officers by next April. So this was back in what is this, 2021? <laughs> they wanted 40% of their officers to become brown, right? Uh, an aspiration of 8% from black backgrounds specifically. Now, in case you're wondering, um, here's the stats. You can go and find it. It's on the government's website. And um, it, it failed. Bigly. Didn't work. So you can see here, there's two graphs, population and police officers. So who are the police? Well, they're overwhelmingly uh, white people. This being basically English, not really Europeans unless you've got that Bulgarian lady. And then the people that are underrepresented in the police is everyone else, every other racial group there. Not represented because they're not joining. So her solution was, well, make it illegal to hire white people and therefore always hire the brown person over the white person because they've got brown skin and this will make the country safer. No, it won't make it safer. Her position was actually that it would make it browner. That was her goal as commissioner of the police to make the police browner, not more effective. Didn't matter if they became less effective. And just net fewer number of police as well. Yeah. Bargain. And those who are there are just diversity hires, literally just for the sake of it. Because the, the initial aim was 40%. You know it wouldn't have ended at 40% if they had managed to achieve that in the first place. Do you remember a few years ago, there was that, I think it was Channel 4, talking about their diversity hiring and how they were hiring something like 14% black actors, even though that's... You know, way higher than the way higher than the three. What is it on here? Four percent of the population as of 2021. They don't care if it's above the initial thing. It's just to get rid of white people out of these roles. That was Mrs. Dick's actual proposal, and she enacted it. And what happened? Well, nothing. Um, it turns out, which is is not nothing though, because of course the effects of that on your staff is you're telling that if the if you're white, you need to go. When that is 91.9 percent of your staff, it's not a great message to the workforce. Mm -hmm. Not very morale-inducing. Might be even sort of demoralizing, might not it? Yeah. Uh, this goes forward, though, because, of course, um, you try, you fail. Well, what do you do? Well, you declare that racism did this. 
So this is a HR mag called Personnel Today, which uh, concludes that well, that's because they hate they, they hate brown people. That's why. That's why brown people aren't joining because you hate them. Like, no one's joining. Why all brown? They're just they're leaving. That's that's the problem here. Well, like in America, there's obviously some sort of s- sustained, deliberate attack on the the concept of police, right? Defund the police and all that sort of thing. With us over here, if any Americans are watching, you don't know that for years now there's just been there's been report after report after inquiry after inquiry, uh, all concluding that the police are institutionally racist. One of the most famous, the McPherson, yeah. following Stephen Lawrence. And so, yeah, if well, of course, that's going to demoralize them all, isn't it? If you're just repeatedly told there's something mm. fundamentally at your very core which is wrong. Well, well yeah, because they always use that phrase. It's such a weasel word, the institutionally racist. Well, institutions are made up of individuals who operate them. So if you're saying institutionally racist, you're just pointing to all of the police officers and racism being synonym for evil. You're saying all of you are evil because you want to protect your communities. Fantastic. So when you check out all this, this is basically just some podcast that said, the uh, uh, trust us, bro. We did a free from information request and found out that black applicants, for example, had a higher rate of rejection. Therefore, they hate black people. They didn't conduct anything further. They didn't say, well, why were those black people re- rejected? And then check that out. No, no, no. Just the lowest resolution possible. Black people are rejected at a higher rate than the white applicants, therefore racism. Quick, lower standards, lower standards <laughs> everywhere. We need more blacks. It's the only solution. So um, he came in high to the interview. Wow, he seems like a prime <laughs> candidate. So funnily enough, the Media Storm News podcast, I'm just declaring shite. <laughs> I don't even have to watch it. If that's your level of investigation, you are shite at being able to even investigate what's true. And they have a quote from here from this uh, doctor, Dr. Pete Jones. And uh, he says he's a psychologist who worked with the UK police forces on removing bias from recruitment. So he'll be one of the guys who was hired to implement the the racism training, which they can't find in the system, but somewhere. He says, we can't keep pointing fingers at communities, but at some point we have to turn the mirror on ourselves and say, perhaps it's our systems that have done this. Which is just insane. I mean, I know he's literally getting paid to perpetuate the myth that everything in Britain just hates brown people and that's why they and not become police officers. I mean, that's his job. You just said that's what he gets paid to do. So, okay, he's going to give the party line. But it's just such obvious bollocks. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, you know what? The, the black community are so full of just the most stand-up individuals who will want to become police officers, and they're, they're, they're just keeping a brother down. They're just, they're, just, they're just keeping a brother down. That's what's going on. And th- this, not happening. This reminds me, I think right now there's a Channel 4 documentary that's being advertised. You may have seen going around the advertisements where it's about the uh, hardships of Britain's Asian community that they've experienced ever since they arrived. Just national front and rabid, frothing racists just assaulting them in the street for no reason. No rape, uh, no, no reason. <laughs> Nothing to do with rape. Um, and, and, and it's just it's blood libel against the British. So all of these people are just experiencing, they're going home and they're seeing, watching television and just seeing, you're racist, you're evil. You deserve what's coming to you. And then they go to work and they say, you don't deserve to be in the position that you're in. Of course, you're just going to go, I'll quit. I quit. I opt out of society because society doesn't want me anymore. Every signal that so many young white men especially are receiving in our society is we do not want you. We do not accept you. Fundamentally, you are burdened with original sin of racism and we do not want you in our society. So yeah, they're going to opt out. And when you get young white men opting out of a European society, what have you left with? Things are going to get a lot worse. There's the other option, which is you can join the bastards who are doing this. Because as you can see here, personnel today like to advertise their jobs. You remember that pay from earlier? Well, there's a lot better pay in just being uh, someone who sits around counting the races of your staff. Just saying. I mean, look at that. Why not join a local council, get a £400,000 backhand pension? Why? (laughs) <laughs> why, yeah. why do anything useful with your life when you can become an entrenched bureaucrat? 76 grand to work for the police right there. If you become a counter, right? So that's that. Um, but getting back to uh, lesson learning, though, because, okay, you've got these problems. You've tried it. It failed. Okay, well, Dick's gone. You've got the new guy. What's his opinion? His opinion is that you should shut up because, <laughs> as you can see, this is an article from the BBC of him complaining, as he puts it, armchair commentators who film officers and the specific complaint is that he's saying that he's angry that he, the, the officers are being filmed and then criticized on social media for breaking the law 
because this might put off further police recruits. <laughs> well, probably they should be if, if they can't just be good police officers. Because if you're being filmed and it's you know unjust criticism, that's one thing. But if it's just criticism, I think that's fair. And this all comes, this specific article comes not from, oh, I don't know, um, people testing cops by, you know, there's some YouTube channels that do this back in the day where they'd go and take pictures of stuff and perfectly legally, and quite often police officers would break the law and arrest them and then get sued. And it was a way of testing the cops uh, upholding the law. It's not like this. No, it's all to do with the Palestine protests. This is entirely what was spurred on by this. Because this guy, he's a good friend of ours, takes a lot of good pictures. Uh, he's just responded endlessly. It's the police lying with video evidence. So this one is them saying that, well, people were climbing, people, Palestinian protests were climbing on the memorials, the war memorials. They say it's unacceptable. It's actually a crime. It's not unacceptable. It's 10 years in prison. You know, we passed that law a few years ago for this purpose. And as you can see, they say that, well, uh, we regret that the officers on scene were not able to intervene. There's just no access to the memorial. And then our friend here is just like, yeah, but here's the video evidence. Here's them climbing on the war memorial. And then you can see the police off to the side. He just pans the camera. They're just cowards. They were not able to respond. Absolute cowards. They're there. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a lie. Yeah. Okay, this is what you're, you're sad about. Here's another one. So this is the police saying here that um, this guy was arrested. And they say, no, 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 no. He, he was arrested because we believed he assaulted someone. Not because he was holding a sign that said Hamas a terrorist. And then the video evidence is that, no, he turned up with a sign that says Hamas a terrorist. The Palestinian guy started beating him up. And so the police arrested him and said that he assaulted them. Which again, the video evidence is just there. You're just lying. It just goes on and on. There's some more. So he's complaining that they've lost control and the police actually responded to him personally, saying, we've not lost control. And it's like, but everyone has eyes. And we can, see, we can yeah. see the footage. Stop lying. Uh, here's another one. So this is the police taking pictures with the Palestinians, which you're not allowed to do. It's just not professional standards, if nothing else. This can go next to my collection of London police officers kneeling at BLM protests. It can indeed. Because that's another example. And they say, well, we encourage officers to be engaging and friendly with the public. It's like, no, though. No, no, you don't. The Tommy Robinson rally you wouldn't do such a thing, and you know it. And again, our friend is just like, just fuck off. <laughs> I don't even want to talk to you anymore. And this is when they're not just getting community noted for lying. So here's an example where they're saying that the word jihad has many meanings, you may remember. His but Turia are a peaceful group. And, and the community notes are just like, no, what are you talking about? They're literally calling for the death of all non-Muslims. But the Metropolitan Police defended them. Yet why do you think your 91% white workforce are leaving? I mean, you are defending people saying they're going to kill them on Twitter. I mean, when you're not just doing random stuff like this. So this is <laughs> the police whining because uh, that Bulgarian girl from earlier. And then they responded with the correct criticism of people filming her and then criticizing her. We're aware of significant social media commentary. Some of the comments are personal and hurtful. This is unacceptable. Yeah. Come, come and arrest me then. Like This is why I think on a fundamental level there's a reason the police aren't serious. And it's the ideological rot. And it manifests itself in these examples, the reason I'm showing them. And if your intention were to basically destroy a country or a nation, if you were to undermine or ruin the very fabric of, their, of the society, of the social society, um, you would abolish borders and make the police completely inept or get rid of the police. Get rid of borders and police and it will very, very quickly... Uh, and shit. Yeah. And but it's hard not to think it's, it's very deliberate. Yeah, and the police seem to be on the public side at this point with 97 to 98% of them saying, don't join, it's shit. Why? Because we don't get taken seriously by the government. None of the system works. And instead, this is what we look like now, telling everyone to stop being so mean. I, I believe it was in the politics where Aristotle pointed out that the, one of the clearest signs of a tyrant is that instead of having... Uh, his own people protect him. He will surround himself with foreigners mm. for protection. Mm. So there we are. That's the police. Uh, they literally can't even get people to replace the ones who are leaving at this point. So um, that's not good. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium contents on the site, such as the Epoch series, this episode on Michelangelo Part 3. 
you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at LotusCesars underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.